So today we're going to be looking at how to take your quotes to new heights. And basically, we're going to we're going to show you our takeoff feature and how we can improve your quoting process and how we can save you a lot of time as well. So last week or two weeks ago, we looked at how to increase profitability with house. Um, I'm not sure if any of you has been there. Um, no. Has anyone joined the previous sessions? I missed that one. No. no? Well, we record them as well. So if you want, we can send them to you. Yeah, that would be helpful. Yes, please. Yes, thank you. Um, Anya, next or in two weeks, and we're going to look at how to keep projects on track. And then the third session is going to be how to remain competitive in a visual world. Um, now, are any of you planning to join this um, upcoming sessions as well? Yes, I would like to. Well, that'd be great. We will we'll be. We'll be happy to have you there as well. Um, so I'm gonna go to the next one. And so I'm gonna go through the agenda for today. So first we're gonna have a little group discussion um, where you can all maybe share a bit about your quoting process or your takeoff process and how you calculate material for your projects. Um, then we're gonna have a look at how it can benefit and maybe optimize that process for you. And then Gabby is going to show you um, a bit, a demo of um, our takeoff feature. Um, and in the end, we're going to um, have a look at what the next steps can be. Maybe you would like to book a one to one and any takeaways um, you may have. So let's go ahead with the group discussion. <clears throat> and my first question is. How are you currently calculating material costs for your projects? Anyone can either write on the chat or maybe shout it out or however you okay. feel. Well, um, we, uh, we got ours priced by um, a Juicen's uh, called Build Aviator. So it's a, like a quantity surveyor. So we basically give them a drawing and they price all of the materials. That's how we do it. Okay, and then you would purchase the materials from them or would you go to um, other suppliers? The idea is that they that we purchase from them, but that doesn't always happen. Okay, great. Does anybody else um, have the same pros? Maybe does anyone do something a bit different? Uh, we do, my husband does everything by himself. And uh, at the moment, uh, we used uh, we we uh, had the offer from Build Partner, if you know the program, uh, for the extension. It's uh, you know I I just uh, did the measurements and everything, and it uh, calculated all the costs. Okay, so do you do site visits to calculate the materials? Like, do you go into site and yes, then my, my husband does everything. Okay. Yeah. Do you ever work with 2D or 3D floor plans as well? Uh, I'm not sure really about that much. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, does anybody else use um, 2D floor plans or on top of site visits maybe or, or both? Well, we use plans, so it's 2D plans, mm -hmm. mostly not 3D. Right. I think we do as well 2D. <laughs> okay, interesting. How interesting, Xavier, that um, two out of our three participants here are investing or uh, spending money outside their company to have this process done, either through through a quantity surveyor or by hiring a separate software. And how interesting it is that this is all this tool is included in your packets you're already paying. Exactly. Well, not not the prices. Yeah, that's that's what I asked a few times already from house because uh, the the answer was the house doing in America, but not here the pricing system. What do you mean with the with the pricing system exactly? Uh, that software I was using for the extension gives me mm -hmm. a real real time or how they call it prices as well. Oh, so you don't your husband doesn't enter the prices manually. It has like a catalog not, inside? Not the prices. They have the prices there in the software. Mm, okay, yes. No, we... Yeah. But 
I'm not sure how they do it. Hmm? Yeah, so can I ask, like, how do you, do you know where the software gets the prices from? And then when you go out and purchase the materials, do you, is the, the quote accurate? Yes, uh, my husband checked it on, uh, you know, on, on them, like, uh, when he buys it, I don't know, from Selco or uh, somewhere else, you know, so he checked the prices and uh, it was uh, almost the same, yeah. Okay, interesting. I'm going to go on to question number two. So in regards to the process you currently have, um, what do you think is working well and what do you think can be improved? So maybe think about what takes you a lot of time or what are some repetitive tasks that you could maybe automize a little bit and how would you ideally try to improve them? Or have you even tried to maybe optimize your workflow? It, um, we did. I did do a session with you before where you showed us the um, the way of going to what what was it something online. I haven't actually improvised it where you uh, add things that you're going to sell to a uh, catalog and then you just pull them off and you give them that. Yeah, so that's a very good idea, and that probably would be helpful for me. Uh, selling bathrooms and kitchens, mm -hmm. you know, to price them better. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, Jitka, do you also um, have you heard of the Clipper before? Do you also use that? Uh, I'm not sure about that, really. Okay, um, never mind. Like, I'll be able to send you the, the recording of last session as well, so you'll be able to look at the Clipper, and I'm sure maybe you will buy, you'll find benefit in that um, as well. Um, but would you like Jitka to maybe share a little bit more about um, what do you think can be improved in your um, quoting process? Angelo Q. Call from Angelo Q. Sorry about that. I'm not sure really about that. Sorry. Okay, maybe, do you know anything that maybe takes a lot of time or like I said before, really repetitive tasks that you think maybe should be done in an easier way? Uh, uh, it's difficult for us because uh, every job is different, really. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So I, it's hardly to say because I'm not using the templates much, really, because we're using like uh, for, I don't know, even the kitchen fitting, you know, it can be different price for, because uh, it depends how big is the kitchen and the client really chooses, you know, what he wants, what he doesn't want and like that. So it's, mm -hmm. the templates doesn't work for me much, really. Okay, I understand that. Uh, Wix has used templates, which Wix's kitchens use templates. Mm. Um, so they have, so they make it really simple. They just have a fitting price for one unit, which includes hanging the doors, putting cornice and pelmet on, etc. And they just then literally count up all the units that are in the kitchen and come up with a price. So if you have some kind of templating like that, that would be helpful. Mm -hmm. And I imagine that if you use like the clipping tool to grab the products directly from the website in Wix yeah. and save it into your house pro, then you can easily add the products with the prices included for the fitting and everything to send out the quote, right? Yeah. Yeah. And just a quick follow-up. Um, Leslie, how long does it take you to get a full quote back? So, <clears throat> excuse me, when you request a quote and it, this goes to a third party and then it comes back, so how long does that take about, you? About a week. All oh. I do is just I ping it over uh to the, the lady who deals with the build aviators stuff and then sh then i get a call back from uh the quantity surveyor that's going to do the job and then he'll go through the project with me verbally discussing the plans that he'll have in front of him and then uh he goes off and, and prices it all comes back with a price and gives me a a print off as a of something to present to the customer Wow. I mean, two weeks is a long time. Do you think you've ever maybe missed on a job while you were waiting for the quantity surveyor to come back with the, with the no, quote? It was not, 
it's not two weeks it's one week it takes mm, and generally week. not because customers will accept that you know mm -hmm. to come back within a couple of weeks is for a, for a building project anyway mm -hmm. but if you've got faster methods the trouble with building work is it's so varied and there can be so many um odd things that to put it completely on a template is difficult Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why you. I will show you guys later when I do the demonstration. But there are parts of the software that can be saved as a template, but most of it is quite flexible. And in the case of, for example, calculating materials, of course, every calculation will be different. Uh, so that we don't rely on templates so much. It's more like making the material calculation is super fast and easy. Uh, so even if you're quoting for a job you've never done before, so there's no way you're going to have like pre-made templates for it. It won't take you more than, I don't know, an hour to finish your quantity, uh, your bill of quantity for that project. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, okay. I'm going to move on to question number three. And then how do you share the information of the quotes you created or the quotes you receive with your clients and your team members and subcontractors? So um, I would just email, ordinarily I would email what uh, Build Aviator gives you two, two um, packages. One's for me personally with all the quantities on and all much more detail and then there's another one just to give to the customer mm -hmm. so ordinarily the idea is that i pass that on but i was speaking uh we had a little forum with juice and so we're doing a uh what do you call it um anyway, we're discussing with juice and um a lot of the guys they were discussing build aviate with them and a lot of the guys were saying they don't actually give that out the the, the customer copy because it wasn't really a very good presentation and a lot of it didn't kind of uh they just weren't happy with it yeah um, so presentation is important i think customers are more interested in seeing uh, what things cost in terms of plastering, roofing, um, doors, skirting board, in lists, so they know everything's included. So, yeah. yeah, presentation is definitely important, and that is why our system is not only uh, meant to help you guys save all your calculations, but also when you convert those calculations into a document you're going to share with the client, it is quite client facing friendly, right? It is very mm -hmm. simply stated. Um, it is easy for the client to compress items by group and see like, I only want to see the co total cost of materials by the plastering. I don't want to see the details um, and sort of understand and read the document. Mm -hmm. And then I have a quick follow up. So if your client changes his or her mind, um, you know, in terms of the project, um, would you have to go back um, to your to that partner that does the quote for you? And would you have to recalculate um, certain materials? Because I'm guessing he would for certain projects buy in bulk. And if he, re he re if you reduce the order for certain materials, would the price go up? And how long would that take usually? Um... So there is a facility to go back to the person that priced the project and say, look, it's uh, too tight. Can you save money somewhere? Or can you do this or do that or something changed? So they will do that. And I think it's still within the same fee. And it's not, it's not extortionate. It's about 200 and something pounds per project. Okay. Uh, but I imagine that when, when you send them, the client wants something different. You have to, again, wait for the quantity surveyor to send you things back after five or four yeah. days. Yeah. So it's not up to you, like the timing, how fast you, you want, you can get things done. Yeah. The, the main thing for me is, uh, which is why we use the, 
quantity surveyor is to make sure that the prices are right, you know, and that the costs of materials and stuff are all accurate and the quantities of materials. Because if you don't get it right, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand. Um, Jitka, would you like to share a little bit about how you share um, your quotes and your documents with your clients and team members? Yeah, I do use uh, email as well and WhatsApp. <laughs> Send the link. Uh, when I use house, you know, we do it ourselves. So it's uh, quite quick. You know, we just sit down and do it together so we can have it the same day. Uh, mm -hmm. When I use house, you know, we, we use our own, like, you know, we, we putting our own uh, items there and prices, of course. And last time when I used the other program, uh, it give us uh, like three different quotes, like uh, low, low, mid and high quotes. So the client choose and uh, she was changing after that, she was changing something. So we did it ourselves in that program. So it was quite quick as well. And if we needed some help with something, it was uh, in a daytime really, you know, one, one, one day response. So it was quite quick as well. Okay, it's actually quite good. But you said you send the quotes out via email, right? Uh, through house. House. Okay. Yeah, through house uh, by email, or I copy the link and send it on WhatsApp. Oh, okay, so she's she's like doing a hybrid system, for what I understand. So she's creating the quote, the calculations with this other software, and then she's translating that into the quote system within house to send it out. No, 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 I didn't use, uh, for that, uh, the, the other program we printed out because it was like, you know, uh, full details. Uh, so we printed it out and she checked it out and changed things. So I changed it on that program. But when I use for another, pro, uh, another uh, project, I use how, so we put our own items there. I, I don't use the templates really, what, what are there in the system. I always create my own items. Gotcha. All right. Just one last question. And what areas have you explored of House Pro's takeoff so far? So has anybody ever maybe checked out the feature, maybe played around with it a little bit? I tried uh, no. the measurement. Sorry. <laughs> I just tried the measurements on it. You know, I like it. Yeah. So you you kind of maybe scratch just the surface, and I think I was going to show you really that there's a lot more to it, but it's also really straightforward, very easy. And uh, Leslie, you were going to say, uh, did, did you try too? No, I haven't tried. Okay, that's no problem. I think I was going to give you a very nice introduction to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So All right. So we get into it. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen. Uh, guys, please interrupt me if you have any questions, but what we're going to do is we're going to go through how usually the system would be worked, okay? So normally you will log into your House Pro and then you have this nice get started with House Pro box and just if someone here hasn't tried it yet, I really advise that you use this test drive at, um, takeoff, sorry, here, create a takeoffs, because it will like give you like a complete tour on how it works, right? So it's like a step-by-step -step guide. Um, but for now, we're going to skip that. And as you know, here you have the landing page and I can go directly to the project I'm going to do a calculation for, right? So house renovation for this client. And from here, uh, within my project folder, I have the option of creating a takeoff. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the takeoff tool. And the first thing that will appear here is uh, if you haven't uploaded um, a plan yet, it will ask you to add it by uh, grabbing it from your computer. So I'm just going to show you how that works. I'm going to go ahead and upload a house plan. So the one for my projects is actually this one. Uh, just make sure your document is a PDF um, so that you can upload it. And here we go. This is exactly how my plan would look like. Mm -hmm. 
gonna give it a couple of seconds to load. Great. Now, what are the first steps to using this program? First of all, you have to make sure that the scale is right. Okay. Um, apologies for the loading thing. I think that sharing my screen is just making my computer a bit slower than usual. Let's give it a couple of seconds. I'm going to see if maybe refreshing the screen is going to help it. Okay. Right, there we go. So, um, first of all, um, Xavier, can I ha can you uh, help me? Someone texts a question. Can you let me know? Because I won't be able to see the comments while we do yes. this. Okay. Great. So um, I mentioned that the first step is, of course, to check that the scale is right. Right. Most documents will tell you the scale. So, for example, this one is one to uh, 100 and you can click in here under page scale and you can adapt the scale. However, uh, if you want to be very sure, you can use the fine scale button and you can uh, use a known measurement on your page to set the scale. So I'm going to go ahead and click on fine scale. I'm going to grab a known measurement. So for example, I know this from start to finish is 8,800. So I'm going to click in here double click. I'm going to enter the measurement. And I'm going to click on set scale. As you can see, it's a bit different than what it was. Oh, did I make a mistake, Xavier, from your face? You may have accidentally added a zero too much. Ah, I, I missed the, the dot, right? Thank you. Yeah, I thought it was a bit odd. One, two. So it's 8.500 probably, right? Um, yeah. There you go. Okay. Um, now that we have the scale, the next step is, of course, to start measuring. Now, just to give you some tips, your map uh, of the house, the plans, might have uh, several pages. They're all going to be in here. But if you know you're only going to work with one or two pages out of, I don't know, 20, you can pin them down with a symbol so you can easily find the pages you're going to work with under your pinned pages. OK, so let's say for this house, I need to calculate how much um, carpet I will need. Right. So I have different tools here at the top. I can make calculations in rectangular areas. I can use the polygon tool for irregular areas, and I can use the length tool when I need to measure a length. Uh, let's see how this works. So I'm going to choose the rectangle tool. I'm going to zoom in a bit to be more precise when making the calculation for this bed. And I have to choose which material am I going to um, measure. So I already have pre-created pre carpet here. I'm going to click on a corner and just select the area and release it. And on the right side, I can see now my uh, calculation, right? Now, you can edit your favorites here under edit. And you can have the price for this particular carpet. So I have it said that it's five pounds a square meter, but I can change it to whatever it is, depending on the supplier I'm working with, and this will be saved for the future. Um, how can I create a different group? Let's say I want to calculate, um, I don't know, um, paint, and I don't have this uh, material created in my favorites yet. I'm going to click on create group. If I think this is a material I might use for other calculations on other projects in the future, I can save it to favorite. And I'm going to click create group. So now I'm going to use length. I'm going to use the paint. And I'm going to calculate the paint I'm going to be needing for these walls. So I'm going to go ahead and enter this area. And it's in there, in here, um, sorry, here, I can add the height 
of the wall, right? To be able to calculate the square meters of the wall. So I'm gonna say, okay, this is 2.7 meters. So it will be able to calculate the area of the wall for the paint. And um, I can now continue uh, calculating my paint. So I'm also going to need it in here and in here. Okay, guys, how are we doing so far? How is this looking? Okay, understand. Okay, that. good, good. Uh, now, what happens if I need to calculate an irregular area like this bed number one? I can go back, I'm going to uh, choose the polygon tool and I'm going to choose what I'm going to uh, measure. So the carpet and the polygon goes clicking like this and I can grab an area that is irregular easily. So I can grab this and once I finish, I click enter and it's there and it automatically added it to the carpet calculation. Mm -hmm. um, perfect. So if I have different carpets and they have different prices, of course, I can create here the different groups and say carpet from X brand or carpet from X um, code uh, to have the different materials calculations. Now, uh, if you need to, for example, calculate um, the ceiling paint and you don't want to have an area on top of another area, you can also duplicate pages. Let me zoom out. So in here on your left side, you can click and you can clone. And it's going to ask you if you want to clone the page with the measurements. I'm going to say no. So now I'm going to have a new page. I think the clone is in here. Um, to be able to make cal cal further calculations without having like color on top of color on top of color, right? It's like easier and more organized. Um, the other thing that I want to show you guys is that you can also calculate power outlets. Um, you can mark uh, how many doors you need to buy with the count system. So I'm going to go ahead. Let me just zoom in. I'm going to say, OK, I need to calculate how many doors I'm going to need. So I'm going to use count. And again, I if I don't have the group, I can create it. So I'm going to create doors. I'm going to put a color to it and a new icon. And I'm going to add it to favorite. So I'm going to mark that I'm going to need to buy a door here, here, here. Well, all the doors, right? So then I can enter the price for this door and it will automatically tell me how many doors I need to buy and of course how much this was, right? Um, so in here on my right side, I can see I have eight doors counted. And again, I can add the price for the door in here. So every door is going to cost me 35 pounds. Save. And now that's going to be added. Um, once I'm done calculating everything, as you can see here at the top right, I can create this into a quote. And the cool thing about house is that because everything is integrated, you can then convert that into an invoice. And then you can use the financials uh, tools to track the accounting of your project. So it's going to be everything in one place. Now, before we finish, there's just one final tool that I'm pending to share, which is the deduct tool, right? This one is very useful for, for example, when you need to deduct the, the windows from the wall calculations. So I'm going to say, OK, I need to calculate um, how many bricks I'm going to need. So I'm going to create the group. And I'm going to create a new color. I'm going to add it to favorites. And I'm going to calculate the bricks I need for the uh, facade of this house. Um, so I'm going to go and do this. Right. Perfect. And now to deduct um, the window, I'm just going to click on deduct. And I can do this. And that's it. The system will have removed 
that area from the calculation and now this is updated. I'm just gonna go ahead and enter a, a price for the bricks because I don't think they have a price. No, I'm gonna say the brick is 2.5. Save and close. Perfect. So, um, guys, until now, any questions? Yeah, can I ask uh, if I have sure. like uh, these three pages, uh, how do I add all of them to one estimate? If I have yeah. here a review and estimate from one page, then. Yeah, so when you I click review and estimate, it will come, it will grab the information from all the pages. Mm -hmm. So if I click, for example, review and estimate, it will show me the summary, right? So this is the calculation I did. And as you can see, it's showing me all the calculations regardless as, as to from where page I did them. Mm -hmm. So from here, I can either download this as a XLS, so uh, an Excel. I'll show you later how that looks, or I can, um, import this in convert it into a, a quote with the house pro system so i'm gonna click on start new estimate okay here we go so um i've already set up my my information of my business my logo it also filled the client's information I can set up a due by date. So I can say this quote is going to expire by the end of the month because I cannot guarantee the price of the materials are going to be available in the same um, quantities after that. Um, and then I can customize all these columns that are here by default. And also I can group by category or none. Okay. So I can, I'm going to put none. Um, for example, if I'm not working with markup, I don't know if you guys are familiar with markup, but basically you can say, okay, uh, when I buy this um, carpet from the vendor, it's going to cost seven pounds, but actually I'm going to sell it to the client at eight because I have a retail discount and actually this costs in outside in the market is it costs 10 so the client is still saving money by buying from me and i actually want the quote to show the client the saving he will have by buying through my um my uh, myself basically <laughs> um if you want, you can set up a default value for your markup. If you always know it's the same percent and you can apply it to all, all products at once. Um, and of course, here it shows the cost. I realize here I haven't added the cost. So I'm going to say it's four pounds the square meter of paint. And you can add the VIT. And again, you can add it manually or you can set a default value. And all my VAT is always 20%. Okay, um, as you can see, this column shows the final co cost, uh, including the VAT. And here the client can see a breakdown of how much is um, the VAT and the subtotal. Now, I know that the markup, which is your earnings extra are showing here, but when you preview and share this document, you can choose to hide that. So don't worry about this showing at, up until this point. The document, how it is shown in here, is under edition mode. So it's solely visible to you like this. Um, now here you can schedule a payment plan. So if you want to uh, request a deposit, you can say, yes, I always work asking 35 deposit upfront. And you can say an up until which date this deposit expires. So because we said that the prices were um, um, valid until the end of the month, we might give the client until the end of the month to pay that. And in here, if I want, I can upload files. As you can see, it's showing me the files that I have all, already in the, uploaded into this project. So some of them might be ideas so that the client said of how the house they want to look like, render. So I'm going to go ahead and upload a render that I know that is going to 
the client's gonna like that. And I can also upload the house plan. So I'm gonna have it here just so that everything is in one place. Sorry, I'm just moving the Zoom thingy. Okay. Right, um, terms and conditions, uh, you can create templates for them. So let me see if I have a terms and conditions. Yeah, I'm, I already pre-created them here and I can set it as a default. So in the future for all estimates, it will be added and I won't have to be um, adding it manually. So for now, I'm just gonna add it. So here I have all my terms of service. Um, they're quite long. Let me reduce this. And then in Mimo, this, uh, this is like an optional space for you to add, maybe if you want to add project details and explain a bit more about what has been discussed with the client. And of course, all this you can move around. So if you want like the Mimo at the top and some people put like here, like dear customer, um, and they add all that has been discussed blah blah right um anything uh, any extra comments etc and um you can request signature if you want this document to go out signed or you can send it out without requesting signature okay how are we doing so far guys very good <laughs> very good okay let's go and preview the document because in here as i said you can choose what information from the document you created you want the client to see right and that is done here under settings so i have set up that i want to show detailed pricing let me just show you how this looks so but you can remove this if you want let me just remove everything so you can see how this looks so normally yeah normally your document when you create it will come up like this and you have to choose what you want to show. So I want to show detailed pricing and it shows there the final price. And there you can see it has the thing saying is 20% of the retail price. Then I want to show quantity, unit and cost. If I want, I can add item info. This is if in case you've added a description below carpet, right? Like the carpet has these characteristics, blah, 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 blah. You can add all that if you go into edition mode. And then of course you can add electronic signature. And if you know your client is undecisive about some elements, you can use the approved line item and your client will be able to approve and let you know which areas are problematic for her and she needs to discuss and maybe quote a different paint price, maybe a different um, quality because it was too expensive for what they were thinking. So they can go ahead and click on the cross and you know what are the elements you need to discuss with her or him. This is how the breakdown looks like. As you can see, markup is hidden because I didn't select here, show markup. So the client only sees the VIT. And because this is a live document and not just like a frozen PDF, um, it has an amount paid uh, section to it. So if you were to log that you received the deposit from the client, this document will apply, uh, uh, update and it will show here the client has paid a deposit. And so when the client opens this document in six months from now, it will show them how much they paid, how much balance there um, is outstanding and what are the next payment uh, that are expected from her and in which dates. At the bottom, the client can access the files, right? So the house that they had discussed for inspiration, the metrics, uh, the terms and conditions, I'm just gonna go ahead and skip this bit. And then of course the client can sign it. And um, this document can be shared via uh, the built-in email from house. Um, and it comes with a template here of what to say, but you can change this template here. So I have different templates for um, estimates for change orders, for purchase orders to make my life easier. You can send a copy to your email and you can send it. Um, you can also share this document as a link by clicking here. So I heard, for example, um, 
Jitka mentioned that she shares a link via WhatsApp. You can also do this with this unique link and your clients will not need to have an account in-house to be able to access the document. Anyone that clicks on the link will be able to see this. And of course, they'll be able to interact. So if I'm the homeowner, I might say, yeah, this is exactly what I was thinking about the carpet. I'm not sure about the bricks um, and I'm not sure about the doors. Let's discuss this. And I will send you a message like, um, hi, Jitka, for example. Uh, I'm not sure about uh, X, Y, and Z. Um, can you call me? And we will look at different options. I have approved the items that I'm happy with. And this message will pop up at the top and it will be visible both for the client and for yourself. And of course, it will also be visible in here in your uh, thread of conversations in your messages tab. So this is the message I just sent out. Um, and it will be also visible here in the overview. So you, you can always keep track of what is the latest activity with whatever you're working on. Um, right, and how does this look uh, from the client's point of view? Um, they can click in here to approve and sign. So I'm just going to go ahead and do my signature. And that's it. I can click now. Um, I have to finish, I think, approving the ones that are um, OK and submit and sign. And I will now receive here in my overview, I'll be able to see that my document has been approved and signed. So there we go. I have a, in my overview, the document is being approved. I can also find it under my estimates tab and I can see it has been approved and how much is um, the next payment due, et cetera. So from here, of course, you can create an invoice. If you want, you can create invoice for one element and create an invoice for only the one thing you're gonna invoice or you can go ahead and create an invoice for all the approved items. And then you will have your new document. So here you have your invoice, perfect. And you can send it to the client to request payment. And of course in here, you can also log that the payment happened. So I'm gonna say, I received the deposit. All this speed that I've just shown you is like beyond using the takeoffs tool. It's about also how to manage the estimates and the invoicing system. And of course, I we really encourage you to have a look at the previous um, uh, workshop we did about financials, because you'll be able to see and how to use the finances tra tracker. So um, it's about how to track and manage uh, the expenses you are um, do, uh, you're logging into a project, how much income you've had, how is your cash flow looking, and sort of keep track of all the material costs and avoid uh, phantom expenses being missed and money being lost, of course. I'm just trying to use that now. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> Um, as always, if you guys want to have a deep dive, a deeper dive in into this or feel you need help, you can always um, either contact your support manager if you have still, if you're still under the on onboarding period, you will have her calendar and email here. You can call the support line, which is this phone number from Monday to Friday, nine to six. If you have any questions and either Xavier or one of our support reps from his team will be there to help you on the spot. And uh, you also have the support tickets um, where you can say if you need help with a particular tool. So let's say I need help with takeoffs and um, I, you can request here a live um, training one-on-one -on -one to go through your questions or you can just make a question and, and they will reply by a email um have any of you guys used so far the any any of the support tab elements yes perfect how anyone else leslie no i haven't used it 
Okay, did you know that you had these options available? Uh, not really very frankly made aware that the thing I was told there's lots of things you can do with the house app, but uh, not, I didn't feel like there was any real support there because most mm. apps don't have support, do they? Yeah, uh, it is part of like what makes us different, having all these different yeah. resources. Yeah, very um, easy and very quick. I'm very happy to hear that. How about you, David? Have you uh, ever needed support so far? Have you requested help using any of these tools? Oh, wait, David, you're muted. Um, If you see in your screen something that says like unmute, can you click like yes to it? No? If you're looking at your toolbar, there you go. Now you have audio. <laughs> um, yes, I haven't tried yet, but um, I certainly will need the help. Yeah. Um, um, probably plenty of it being an antique old bugger. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're very eager to help, so please reach out. And uh, well, last but not least, uh, remember if you, we, we try to adapt to different learning styles. Some people prefer to have calls, other people love to get instructions via emails, and other people really love to watch video tutorials to manage their learning. So that's why we also have a video tutorials library. Um, I think most of the videos here are very introductory. They're a great way of learning the basics and if you need further help, you can request it. But if it's your first approach to the tool, I would really recommend you have a look at these videos. For example, how to use the basic tools here on House Pro takeoffs. Here it will teach you in 30 seconds how to deduct an area. As you can see, they're not long, right? The longest is, I think, um, four minutes. So they're, they're quite uh, like digestible chunks of information to help you out. Um, right, uh, Xavier, why don't we have a look at next steps and take and key takeaways? Yes. So, sorry, I think. <laughs> so, yeah, next steps. Um, so after having seen Gabriela's really great demo, um, how do you think the takeoff can benefit your business? <laughs> I mean, have not you seen, you not know, maybe, everyone at the same time, please. <laughs> <laughs> can you maybe imagine how we can maybe translate it, like really the easiest, the easiness and the speed of it? Do you think that I can translate into your business? Do you think that is something you can see yourself using in the future? I do try already. So I'm trying, you know, little by little, I'm trying to use more and more features really on house. Good. My biggest issue is time, getting time to actually learn the whole thing. Yeah. Well, I think, yeah, there's always like um, a learning curve to everything. Um, and yeah, I, could, I think most of our pros really pick it up in an hour to two, but then they're able to really pull out this type of estimates and quotes in like five to 10 minutes. Yeah, it is. So I think it's really well invested. And again, yeah. we're here to help you if you ever need help. So um, if you, you can book a training call with us and we'll be happy to assist you. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking, on the, I'm, I'm looking on the app now. And I can't find takeoffs. Yeah, that's because a uh, great, great thing that you brought that up. The app doesn't have all the functionalities you have available on your desktop version. And the reason of that is because the app is meant to help you with the task while they are on the go. So for example, um, you are on site and the client uh, asks you um, to send the quote and uh, amend it. You can amend it from your app. You can open the quote that is already done. You can amend the price and send it out again. Um, you can also reply messages. You can um, do measurements for the 3D floor plans. But if you really want to do a takeoff, you do need a desktop computer or a laptop and do everything as I showed. Okay. 
But I think but maybe I think the, um, the app has this function, has this function a room, right? right? With the AR, so there is a feature that would help. I think it would create a feature, right? Gabby, do you know? Sorry, we have a bit of echo. Is it just on my computer? Yeah. My computer? No, it's echoing. Let me try if I unmute. Um, okay, so Leslie, sorry, I muted you because apparently it was your computer that was doing echo. Um, Xavier, sorry, can you repeat the question? We have another feature, like we don't have the take of feature on the app, but we do have an AR. Um, it's kind of like a measurement tool, mm -hmm. but you can scan a room and it will create a 3D floor plan. For yeah. Oh, that's quite cool. The AR tool. The only thing about the AR tool is that it is so smart. It is so technological. It literally, you open the phone camera, it scans a room and it will create a layout of your bookshelves. Your It will recognize your furniture and boom, convert it into a 3D floor plan live. It's amazing. But because it is so much technology, it does require a latest phone. Uh, so I think only the latest version of the iPhone that has like the three or four eyes is the one that actually does that. The rest, you just have to use the, um, how do you call the, the pinpointing thing? The a screen. Yeah, it's like it has a pointer. That is, you have to use the pointer to go manually going from corner to corner to create a 3D floor plan. But uh, if any of you guys have the latest iPhone, I really, really advise that you open your 3D floor plan tool on the app because you will, your mind will be blown. It's just, it's, it's one of those things you imagine, oh my God, this is the future. And I think it's only going to get better because um, I heard that we're trying to implement some um, AR and AI. So yeah, it's only going to get a lot easier to use and a lot more smooth as well. And it's already quite a good feature. So who knows what it's going to look like, you know, a year from now um but yeah so if you want to explore the futures that we've shown you today and um, like we've said i think many times before you're welcome to book a training call with us or you can utilize the hub center how gabby um showed did you show or i think showed the videos right but that uh, was... yeah and oh i didn't show the hub center yes we also have articles so again like if you want videos we have videos if you prefer to read we have step-by-step -step articles if you prefer live sessions you have support team with xavier and uh, so it, there's just we're covered all the areas we're here so please use our resources to 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 have fun with your tools yeah okay i think that's pretty much it i just have um one four question survey that we would appreciate if you could fill out yes uh, to help us improve um these workshops so i'm just going to drop it i think it's this one I'm just going to drop it on the chat yeah okay so if you could fill that out it should take you really just a couple yeah of uh, everyone knows how to open the chat from from the call. So if you look at your Zoom bar in the bottom, there's a small chat window. And um, if you click on it, you'll see the link that um, that um, Saber just sent. And it's a one minute uh, survey, literally like I think it's two questions. Um, but yeah, it does help us improve. Okay. Xavier, can we remind everyone when is the next um the next uh workshop we have? Sure. That would be um, so that you guys pin it in your calendar. Yeah. That would be on the uh, 13th of April. Okay, perfect. So hopefully see you guys then to learn how to keep projects on track using all the end-to-end -end -end solution, right? The, from, from quoting to project management to communications, 3D floor plans, everything all in one. Um, all right, everyone has their link for the survey. Yes. I think we're good to go then. Have a lovely Easter break and Thank see you, you in two weeks.
Have a good Easter and thank you for joining us. Thank See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.